Hello everyone, welcome to Art with Miss Laura. Today we're going to be introduced to our school materials that were sent home and we're going to start a small project. The end result will be a color swatch chart. Okay, let's dive right in. Your school materials. We have received 10 pieces of watercolor paper. Please be very careful with this paper. Stack it in a folder and protect it when you're not using it so that you won't get smudges and then it will be easy to work with. Your second material that was given to you are these Stockmar watercolor sets. We're going to open them up and take a look inside in a couple of minutes and do the color swatch project, but um, it also comes with a set of instructions. Please read this book. I found out some cool things after I read this book about how to mix them, about all sorts of things. You will need a cup of water, a little tiny cup of water. This is not for drinking. This is for cleaning your paintbrush with. And you will need a paintbrush. That came with your set. You will notice this has a flat edge. Hold it up against where you can see it has a flat edge top. If you have a brush that has a pointed edge, like this one, that is okay too. You can use that. But this is the one that's provided for you and will work just fine. It does have a little bit of glue on the top that's holding it together. So if you just want to clean it off by pinching off the top like that, and then you'll be good to go. So I believe that's all the materials that you've gotten. Anything else that you might need is that little glass of water, a pencil for light sketching, a black pen for labeling your colors, and that's it for today. So thank you for joining me and let's get going on our lesson. Hello and welcome back to part two of lesson one. So as you will see, here is your stock market. We have our instructions. We have our watercolor paper. We have our watercolor brush and we have a little bit of water. Probably also a paper towel would be a good thing to grab so that you can dab your water off on a paper towel. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start swatching colors. We're gonna make a Stockmar watercolor palette. So we're going to basically make a chart that you can use that will show you what these colors look like when you put them on this paper. You'll notice that the color goes from dark to light. The name for that is ombre, O-M-B-R-E. It's a French word. You'll see orange goes from dark to light and so forth. And how we get there, I'll show you in a minute. So let's start with lemon yellow. So the first thing you want to notice about these particular paints is how cool they are. They clip in and out. So if you run out of one color before another, you can just add a replacement, take it out, clip in the replacement. It also makes it very easy to clean. If you're like me, you need a nice clean paint palette. Um, it does come with a palette mixer. I can't find mine right now, so I'm just going to use this tray over here, this side of my tray, to mix my colors with water if I need to. But I'm not seeing that I'm going to need to mix too many colors today because I'm doing a color swatching. Okay, so in order to do that, dip your brush, knock it on the edge of your glass or your cup two times, and start to gather paint. Looks like I might have had a darker color on this brush before. That's okay, I'm just gonna add some more water. Clean off the top of it, because it looks a little... That's what you do to clean off a watercolor when it gets a little muddy, is you just put some water and then you dab it up. See how the different color paint comes right off. Okay, starting again. We're gonna add water and swirl until we start to see bubbles, which I'm starting to see already. And that is the texture that we want to start with. You don't have to measure, you don't have to do anything special for this exercise except for start painting. So you'll start by painting with short, brief strokes and then make your strokes a little bit longer 
as they go towards the right. And you'll see as the amount of paint on your brush gets transferred to the paper, it will get lighter. So as you'll see, what I did right there was I just went and picked up a little bit more water. I didn't pick up any more paint. I just picked up the water and I added it to what was already existing here. So now we have a beautiful line of dark yellow to light yellow. So now you know the possibilities for this one color. So let's do it again for all the other colors. Second color, orange. Again, add enough water till you see the little bubbles there. My friend Sophie taught me that. Then you'll saturate your brush with it. Right below the yellow line, start your orange line. It's a beautiful dark color. And as you go right with these short, quick strokes, you see it's getting lighter until you kind of feel like you don't have anything left to paint. And that's when you dip in your water a little bit tap it off twice and then continue and you'll see the color will just come right back alive and start spreading so there you go there's orange notice my lines are not perfect notice that things are happening where the dark and the lighter colors are drying at different times that is perfectly acceptable in some cases that's what people prefer in artwork Okay, Carmine Red. This is one of my very, very favorite colors. It's a definite pinky red. And what I mean by that is that it has more red in it than blue. Oopsie. See what I did? I just went and picked up some more color and I was supposed to go from dark to light. That's okay, I'll start and just put another layer over my dark and it'll be super dark. It's because I got distracted, I was talking. Okay, bam, number three done. All right, I'm gonna whip through the rest of these. I'm gonna put it on fast forward, put a nice little song on here for you. And I will see you at the end of our swatching exercise.
Okay, so next step is to grab your black pen and start writing the names of the colors underneath them. I'm going to start at the bottom. Actually, I'm going to start at the top. These have had time to dry. Okay, so this one here is called Lemon Yellow. So just go down one and one, one by one, and label them orange, carmine red, ultramarine. Sap green, and black. Okay, second row here, we've got golden yellow. Oops. Careful, your bottom swatches may not be dry yet. So golden yellow, and then we have vermilion. Followed by red violet, which is the closest to purple that this palette is going to give you. We've also got Prussian blue. If some of these names sound familiar, it's because the company that makes these paints, Stockmore, also made the watercolor paints that you used with your wet and wet watercoloring class if you had Miss Matson or any kind of Waldorf training before you hit these videos. Uh, blue green is the next color. A lot of people also call this turquoise or teal. It's a beautiful color combination of blue and green and then this last one is rust a lot of people also call this um, burnt sepia or um, a burnt sienna color too sometimes it's like a ready orange okay so there is your completed project please put your name on the lower left hand corner put L Pruitt for mine assignment number one and I am done. You can put this in your envelope and turn it in as assignment number one is done. When, or actually what you can do is take a picture of it and send it in as done. Don't send it into class, never mind that. Because you're, you're going to want to keep this. You're going to want to keep this near your paints so that when you do paint, you know how light and dark looks. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me for lesson number one. Congratulations, you are finished.